Hey folks, we are back with a new video. So, if you uh, watched my last video where I made the uh, PlayStation 2 controller Arduino interface, you will have seen one of these little setups with the motor and the wheel and the motor driver. And of course, I actually have two of them. So I mentioned in the last video that this is a two channel um, motor driver. Um, so yeah, I mentioned in that video that <clears throat> what I was doing was making a machine that I wanted to exhibit at the Dublin Maker Festival, which is coming up at the end of the month. So the machine that I'm making is going to be a two wheel balancing robot. Um, so <clears throat> this is most of the guts of what I'm gonna need for it and um, for the electronics. Um, all I'm missing here is I have a, a LiPo battery that's gonna power it. And also I haven't built the frame yet. So these wheels are upside down right now. So they will be something like this mounted to a, some sort of frame and then that can wheels can move back and forth which should balance the robot it's going to be sort of an inverted pendulum design with all the weight at the top uh, in the form of the lipo battery um so yeah that's pretty much it I, i'm going to start um making it now and yeah you guys can watch along um conveniently some of you may recognize this little board from the uh, drone project that i was working on because it is the same controller board that I was using that I salvaged from the drone once I scrapped the, uh, the whole project. Um, conveniently, it has an MPU 6050 IMU already on it, which is perfect because that's what I need for the self-balancing robot. Um, also has a little onboard data logging system that's all wired up with the Nano. Um, and it has a bunch of header pins that are connected to a bunch of the digital pins on the Nano, which is pretty much everything I need uh, to <laughs> control this project. Um, so uh, I'm going to use that as the brain and yeah so pretty much the only thing that I really have to do is I have to write all the software for it and I have to design the chassis and then assemble the whole thing um, yeah that's about it so I'm going to crack on with that and yeah you guys can watch all right a very small amount of work later uh, and it seems that this board is still running which is what I hoped and we got some life uh, so I have Hey, I got mo mo whoa. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I got motors moving back and forward. Um, so let's see if we can get this uh, IMU sending us some data and see if I can make the motors move based off of that. Um, then hopefully it's time just to build the chassis uh, and maybe it'll all just work. Fingers crossed because I don't have a hell of a lot of time to work on this. Okay, this is, yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is a, a great lesson in reasons why you should not throw away little hardware boards and why you should reuse um, old code and stuff. So I've been messing around with this for about 15, 20 minutes and I've got a fully working uh, PID loop all set up and ready to go uh, with some of this reused hardware and with uh, a little bit of copy code from old stuff I had. So just doing this little it's a little uh, dance to calibrate the sensor. Um again reused code that I was able to pull from my old drone project and there we go. I have the motors responding to change in angle of the IMU. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was way quicker than I thought it was gonna be so that's a massive win right there. So I think what I'm going to do now is going to go and well, I have two things that I want to do. I'm probably going to create a new um, power distribution board because this thing isn't going to be powered by a uh, little uh, wall work power supply. It's going to be powered by a LiPo battery. So I might make a little power distribution board, which will also give me regulated five volts for this guy. Um, and then I'll probably design the chassis. Yeah. So that's next. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've got most of the wiring done. We've got software written. The only thing that has to be done with software is we have to tune our PID controller when we actually get to that point. Um, and yeah, we've got our power distribution board done up, so it now works. So we go on the power switch, all the lights turn on, nothing burning. Yep, all seems good. This is running through its calibration process again, same as we saw earlier on, and there we go. Yeah, and we are working. Okay, so next step, build the chassis. Let's do it. Okay, so we've made uh, some good progress here. Um, basically, it looks like I've made the, the finished thing. Uh, kind of almost have, wasn't really expecting this, but what I went with, this is kind of just a test uh, rig just to see is you know all my hardware up to scratch uh, for this job. So I just printed a really simple little box frame that I could mount uh, the the motors onto, secure the battery, and it's all just <laughs> stuck together with double stick tape and, and Velcro for the moment. But it's uh, surprisingly uh, robust, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but basically, the reason I decided just to throw together like a little test rig to test this thing out is because uh, I only noticed um, on the backs of the motors, I don't know if you can see that, but um, they're only rated for 12 RPM, <laughs> which I didn't really pay attention to when I was buying them. Uh, and then it kind of dawned on me that that might be a little bit slow <laughs> to, for this robot to actually work. Um, so yeah, so I decided to throw this test rig together to test that out. Turns out I was right. <laughs> They're, they are uh, considerably too slow, I believe, uh, for this to work properly. So um, I can throw it on here and I can show you guys what the problem is. So I'm gonna flick the power switch. Again, we let her do her little calibration. And any second now. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's trying to do the right thing. Um, and there it's in like an oscillating state. But if, yeah, if I take my hand away, it just falls straight away. Um, so it's really not able to so if I support it a lot I can get it to sort of into a little oscillating state um, but what you don't know is that behind the scenes I've tweaked all of the PID values oh turn off because the noise is annoying um, I've tweaked all the PID values uh, so that this is as a, the PID parameters inside it are responding extremely aggressively um, uh, and they're pretty much driving the motors there at, at full speed for even about a one degree deflection They're more or less driving the motors at full speed there um, So I don't have anything left to play with so yeah, it's not uh, uh, Not gonna work with these motors unfortunately um, So I, when I bought these motors I was more I had an eye on the because each one was a kit that had the little mounting plate and the wheels and all the, the hardware that comes with the motor and they have these little encoders on the back which I thought could be useful, but right now I'm not using them. So I don't know if I will be using them in this project at all, really. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take these motors off and um, take some measurements off them uh, and see if I can buy some higher RPM motors uh, that will still fit uh, within this whole thing. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna see, go and do some shopping and try and uh, get some motors that'll uh, with a, bit, a little bit faster RPM that hopefully will make this work a little bit better. Okay, so we're back. Um, the last section I was talking about how I figured that these motors uh, weren't quite up to scratch for the job. And yeah, it turns out that was right. So I went and I ordered some different motors. Now you'll notice that these aren't on the machine and that is because, well, this turned out to be <laughs> a bit of a disaster. Um, so I ordered these two motors, they're 200 RPM motors, um, which is, that is the motor and the little gearbox combined together to give you an output of 200 RPMs. But I had an issue. So 
the two motors came shipped, they were actually kind of badly packaged and stuff, so one of the physical motors was actually damaged. I even stripped down, took, took the gearbox out, thinking maybe there was something in there. Turns out it's the motor itself just wouldn't turn properly, so it was getting really hot while it ran, and it was about like 50-60% slower than the other motor, which for a self-balancing two-wheel robot is not ideal. Um, so at that point I was kind of a little stuck, I didn't really know what to do, so then I had a brainwave that these gearboxes and these gearboxes are probably the same <laughs> like the mounting hardware is all the same so I figured that if I took the lot apart I could probably use the old motors which are actually these motors and the other gearboxes which came off so this gearbox is actually 12 RPM gearbox that originally belonged to this set of motors and gearboxes and the motors that are on here now so it's the original motors and it's the new 200 RPM gearbox. Um, so the 200 RPM gearbox came with these uh, motors here. So I did some Frankensteining and it turns out that this works. <laughs> so thankfully all the mounting hardware all fit um, perfectly. So that's good, we managed to get the motors running. So that was success. It had speed of the motors, which is what I wanted. Um, so I now have one extremely slow motor and one kind of slow motor because one of them is sort of broken <laughs> but yeah anyway spare motors do something with them in the future so doing some experimentation then i figured out that there was also a couple of problems that i had um with this guy as well so first problem the first thing you might notice is that i previously i had the microcontroller stuck in here with a little control board which was stuck up under here but it was mounted upside down and turns out that my software and all my calculations and everything for the um, reading the MPU 6050 inertial management unit, well, they wouldn't work <laughs> if it was upside down. So that was causing issues. And um, basically I was getting just wrong values um, for the angle uh, position of the robot. So flipped it around, right way around, and it's giving me, giving me better values. So that's good. Um, couple of other problems I had um, was a few other smaller software issues uh, that I managed to, to fix up just some some little bugs that I hadn't really uh, I hadn't really twigged but managed to fix them up um, and the other thing that was causing me issues was so the battery which is the heaviest single part of the whole machine and basically what what creates the balance point for it and um, it was velcro strapped across the top here with the velcro straps it could move back and forth um, and that was causing me problems and um, because as the robot would move you could actually see the battery shift and that would cause it to fall further one way or the other um, because which causes issues because when, when you're balancing this robot at its set point to start with there's a couple of things like you're not trying to be not you're trying not trying to be like spirit level level with it all you're trying to do is find the the balance point, the very unstable balance point, which depends pretty much entirely on where this battery is sitting. So what I've done is I've stuck it down with some Velcro pads so that it, at least it, it can, it, it, it's not super stable, it can wiggle a bit, but it won't slide, it won't really change the balance point too much. And that seems to have helped quite a lot. So with those improvements, I have managed to do a small bit of PID tuning and it works. So I can show you that. So what you're seeing here is my first attempt at tuning the PID controller. So it's doing a reasonably good job, but it's not really perfect. You can see that it doesn't really want to settle at any kind of stationary point. It, it really very much wants to oscillate around its set point. So for this tuning, it was really, really basic. I had uh, a little bit of proportional gain. I had uh, a fair amount of uh, of integral gain, and I had very, very little. Um, if not, I think in this case, I might have had no um, derivative gain. So you can see that it's just oscillating a little bit too much. So what I did next was I started to very slowly uh, increase the integral gain to see what I could get out of it.
So what you're seeing here is uh, more or less my final attempt at the PID tuning. So you can see as it starts to balance itself that uh, it's a lot finer the the level of like the amount of movement that it has left and right. The oscillations are a hell of a lot lower. It's it's a lot more stable. Um, essentially, I achieved this by massively increasing the integral gain uh, for the system, and that has kind of also added in a little bit of derivative gain, and that seems to have gotten me to about as stable as I can get it. Now, there's a couple of issues here in terms of why it won't just stay still. So it is quite fiddly to balance and so you have to find its very fine balance point at the very start uh, when you turn it on which if you're even a little bit left or right or even a little forward or, or back it'll always want to move in that direction it'll tend to always roll in that direction also my desk here isn't perfectly level so that has, has a contributing factor here as well um so those two things combined make it you know a little bit tricky to get it balanced but essentially it is attempting and succeeding for the most part to stay upright um with the balance that i've given it to start with which i think is a pretty good result another problem that this has is the motors are still a little bit slow so i think when you see a lot of people building these they tend to go with like 300 rpm is sort of a, a minimum speed for the motors mine are only 200 so i think the speed is definitely also paying playing a part in it um but yeah this seems to be about the best i can get with it and i'm pretty happy okay so i think that's about the end of it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it um i hope you learned something or you know just at least found it interesting don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share with your friends, and if you'd like to help support the work that I'm doing, you can find a link in the description to my Patreon. A quick reminder that uh, this uh, upcoming Saturday, the 23rd of July, is the Dublin Maker Festival in Dublin, Ireland. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be there uh, with some of my robots. Um, yeah, so if you're around, drop by, say hi, we can have a chat. As always, guys, thanks for watching.